It's a hill state, Himachal. Perhaps that's one reason why the incumbent government there always faces an uphill battle. Wordplay aside, this is a crucial election both for the BJP and for the Congress. This is a state that has a revolving door for governments, meaning people don't repeat parties. If it's Congress one year, it's BJP the next. Question is, will that trend continue on the 12th of November or will the BJP buck that trend? Before answering that, let's quickly take a look at what the key issues are in the state of Himachal Pradesh. Number one, across India, unemployment, a big problem in the state as well. While the national average is around 7.6%, Himachal's unemployment rate is 8.6%. The state has around 15 lakh unemployed youth, according to some studies. The second issue is the old pension scheme or the OPS. It was scrapped way back in 2003, but government employees and retired officers want it back. In fact, the chief minister has said that that is one big concern, that retired government officials and serving government officials don't seem to be favouring the BJP. That's a challenge according to the sitting BJP chief minister. Now, both the Congress and the Amadmi party have promised to bring back OPS if elected. The third issue, of course, is the Agnipat scheme. Every year, around five to 6,000 young people from Himachal Pradesh used to be recruited into the army, but they are not happy with Agnipat because it turns recruitment into a contractual affair. Issue number four, and this is an issue in all hill states, roads. If you have been to Himachal, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, if you've been to Uttarakhand, you'll know what I'm talking about. In Himachal, about 39% villages do not have road connectivity. The BJP government has started the process of upgrading rural roads. The question is, are people satisfied with it? And issue number five, the troubles of plantation owners, especially apple farmers. We are talking about a 5,500 crore rupee industry here. An industry that has been affected by rising prices of fertilizers and higher GST on cartons as well. Before I go to my guests to understand how all these issues which we have listed out for you will impact the water, Times Network's Sabe Sachi speaking to residents of Shimla. Let's listen into that. The battle has been getting intensified between the Congress and the BJP and this is the last leg of campaigning and that is why all the top leadership from both the parties have been campaigning day and night to reach out to the people. The main issue out here obviously in the hill state are of water, are of unemployment and also the other problems that people speak of. We'll try to get to uh, talk to some of the localites out here. Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, चुनाव आने वाले हैं 12 तारीख को आम नागरिकों की समस्या क्या है इस बार चुनाव में? चुनाव आम नागरिकों की समस्या बहुत हैं, जारी है सबसे पहली बात महंगाई बहुत बढ़ गई है सिलेंडर देख लो आप सिलेंडर बहुत महंगा है तो समस्या समस्या चल और आपका सबसे सबसे ज़्यादा तो ओपीएस है जो सबसे बड़ा मुद्दा बना हुआ है सर ओपीएस का तो मैम आपको क्या लगता है कि पुराना जो पेंशन स्कीम था वो ठीक था या नया पेंशन स्कीम ठीक है आई थिंक मेरे ख्याल से पुराना है बाकी गवर्नमेंट एम्प्लॉय बता सकते हैं ज्यादा मेन समस्या मैं भी एन पी कर्मचारी हूँ मेन समस्या है हमारे को ओपीएस की हम चाहते ही ओपीएस है अब ओ जो सरकार लेगी वोट उसी को देगी कांग्रेस सरकार ने कहा है कि ओ हम लाएंगे मिलेगा वो तो बेहतर रहेगा So which way is Himachal going to vote? Let me quickly introduce our guest to you this evening, Mohit Su, the spokesperson of the BJP, joining us from the broadcast. Ashpeet Khadial is the Congress spokesperson. Just mind you, both these uh, parties are, have a huge challenge as far as rebels are concerned, interestingly. Uh, Shubh Malhotra, a political analyst, will be speaking on behalf of the Aam Party and Neeraja Chaudhary is a senior journalist joining us on the broadcast as well. Mohit Su, we know... Going by tradition at least, you're spokesperson of the BJP, but going by tradition at least, this is not your election to win. Do you think that tradition can be broken? I mean, we, we, we've seen the fact that the Prime Minister has made quite an effort in Himachal Pradesh. Uh, we have seen that you have touched upon many national issues, not local issues so much, but national issues when you were campaigning. You've even brought in the UCC as well. 
Do you think this is the year that Himachal and Uttarakhand has broken that, broken that tradition as well, but do you think this is the year that uh, Himachal will break that tradition? Sure that we will break the tradition of alternate governments. BJP is all set to repeat the government based on its good governance. The road infrastructure development that it has done in the past five years, the health infrastructure development that happened in the five years. We have uh, benefited all the sections of the society. Our social welfare schemes have been a great hit amongst the population and they have been replicated by other states also. So all these parameters put together, okay. despite the two years we lost in Corona, the BJP government has done wonderfully well in the hill state and we are definitely changing the trend. Secondly, I okay. want to lay stress on the fact that there is no concrete good leadership in the Congress. The Congress has a lot of infighting. I think there are 12 leaders who want to become the chief minister and they're, I, it is controlled by one first family of the state who have no control over the party. So a dis, disarrayed leadership of the Congress and a very stable uh, leadership of the BJPs. That is what the people will vote for in this election. Okay, but then why are people from your own party so upset with you? There are around 30 rebels who are fighting against official BJP candidates in a state which has 68 seats. In fact, we have all heard that telephone conversation of the Prime Minister trying to convince one of them to stay back and he refused. See, when, when a party Your own party power... people are upset with you. Okay, let me answer that. Uh, see, when the party in power is set to return and form the government, there are a lot of people who want to aspire for the ticket and they want to become the leaders or become the MLAs. But the party decides on the winnability. And I think the party has uh, done a lot of deliberation, a lot of surveys, internal calculations, the organization, and the, uh, the tickets have been given on those recommendations. So once the ticket is announced, we, all the workers of the BJP, are together fighting for those uh, candidates, and we are sure to win the election on our lotus symbol. Okay, you're sure to win the election, you say on the lo lotus symbol, we'll just wait for that. Ashpit Kadial, come in here. It's not just the BJP that is facing a rebel crisis, as it were. 26 of your own MLAs, senior leaders, have joined the BJP ahead of this election. What is happening? See, uh, as far as uh, the rebels are concerned, I think uh, the Congress party will manage to, you know, pull a victory with or without them. Uh, because the people of uh, Himachal Pradesh are fed up with the Bharti Janta Party. In five years, there aren't five things that the Bharti Janta Party can tell on the show that have been implemented in Himachal Pradesh because like their expertise, they do not uh, you know, do any welfare or development or governance at all whatsoever. They, they all follow the footsteps of Mr. Modi, which is only to campaign, only to advertise, only to brand, only to do marketing. However, what they have failed on is, I, is something that I can tell you on the show itself. They have failed on education, they have failed on employment, they have failed on Medicare, they have failed on Apple horticulture farmers, they have failed on OPS, they have failed on law and order, and they have failed on basically each and everything, you know, that there, there are massive issues with the people of Himachal Pradesh and the Bharti Janata Party, let alone giving time for them, is not even in their state. Throughout, you know, their regime, they, they are always outside in one or the other state because that is how the Bharti Janata Party functions. Less governance, more campaigning, and number four, the viral video of Mr. Modi, you know, Prime Minister had to literally convince a rebel leader. This goes on to suggest that Mr. Modi's focus, Mr. Modi's attention, everything is always directed towards, you know, votes and campaigns and elections, 24 into 7. See, we don't have a problem with a politician campaigning, but we have a problem with a politician. But he's a politician, a prime minister. that's his job. What is the problem with one, a prime minister? One, I tell you what, I tell you what, number one, shows is coming. I, I'd like to, I, may I please, I'd like the Prime Minister will campaign. The Prime Minister will campaign for his party in Himachal Pradesh. No answer to that. Just like there's Rahul Gandhi should have there's campaigned no, 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 no for the Congress that. party in I, Himachal I, Pradesh. I want to draw a comparison here. 
says that Mr. Gandhi, you know, who is doing a Bharat Jodo Yatra, although he's an MP, although he's in the opposition, he hasn't yeah. come to Himachal or Gujarat because he's busy with his motive, with his agenda, with his new Jodo Bharat. Mr. Modi does not do any work, does not do any development, does not do any governance. Only goes to states for campaigning. Motive is not to win Himachal Pradesh. Our leader. So you have given up already. No, Ashpreet, who said, who Ashpreet, said given up? motive is not Mr. to win Mr. the Himachal Pradesh there. election. Have you given up already? Right? Who said Mr. that? He'll win the Himachal Pradesh election. Number one, we will be winning the Himachal Pradesh election. Ashton will speak way louder than words. Our president is already uh -huh. there. The campaign is very good. The people's support is very good. And the people will oust the Bharatiya Janata Party because they have seen through them. But who's your face? Session. Sorry? But who is the face? But who is the face of the Congress Party in Himachal Pradesh? There are at least, no. as the BJP spokesperson is saying, twelve chief ministerial aspirants. At least in the BJP, See. you know who you are voting for. See, in India, in India, we have a parliamentary form of government, or a presidential form of government, or a CM form of government. You know, the air it is the MLAs that decide who their CM is going to be. Once we win with a heavy majority, we sweep the election. After that, it will be decided who the CM is going to be. How is that even relevant? The relevant issue is that there has been no governance development that has happened in the last five yeah. years, that the people are fed up, that the people are going to be showing the door to the Bharatiya Janata Party. And like an, I gave an example. You know, mm -hmm. Mr. Modi, who only does campaign, and Mr. Gandhi, who only does work, who's on a path yatra and does not care about elections or votes or campaigns He's because the there are bigger issues there. at hand. There are bigger issues He's at hand. But for the Prime Minister of India... Neeraj Ji, come Minister in here. India, you are a veteran political reporter. A politician is supposed to be concerned about elections. What logic is this? Go ahead, go ahead, Neeraj Ji. 24 into 7 should be concerned with elections. You're right, Shreya. 24 into no, 7 campaigning. Politician. 24 into 7 branding. 24 into 7 marketing. So much so that even G20, they went ahead with the logo of their own party. You know, election, uh, many, uh, what the election commissioners prescribed them, the Lotus Manifesto. This goes on to show that the Bharatiya Janata Party is not going to be representing Are India it? there or the people of India there. They're going to be representing their own party because this is the only thing they know. They only know marketing, and I have no problem with the politician campaigning, you know, once in a while, but the politician only does campaigning, only does that, nothing other than that, especially being a prime minister, that is when the problem begins. Let's and that is why they're that that not a India's that national is flag, but Neeraja Chaudhary. Neeraja Chaudhary, okay, okay, Ashpreet, listen to me. Let's listen to Neeraja Chaudhary ji before I get Shubh Malhotra in, who's patiently waiting, smiling. Uh, Neeraja ji, what do you say to this logic by the Congress party spokesperson? Look, uh, on when we are discussing elections and the campaigning ended today, two days later, this election where the prime minister is right, has put in everything because he considers even a small state as important. And for any politician, yeah, any true. political party to win election is the first step to doing anything for the people. You are not an NGO. You are a political party that has to get power to be able to deliver to people. So this lo logic, I don't understand at all. And Priyanka Vadra has actually been campaigning. The party has been campaigning and the Congress this time stands a good chance of winning from all accounts. It's going to be a close contest in Himachal Pradesh. Mm -hmm. What happens in the final hours, we don't know. Uh, but certainly the BP has been on the back foot because of factionalism and because of economic issues and rising prices that people have been unhappy about, whether it's uh, apple uh, uh, growers or whether it's ordinary housewife, and, and unemployment, as you said earlier, and there's, a, there's vast unemployment, and both parties are offering, BJP said we'll give a, create eight lakh, eight lakh jobs, Congress says we'll create one lakh job, and so on. They know those are the issues agitating the people. Of course, the Prime Minister is talking about a double-engine government which will benefit the state, because the BJP is in part at the center. But uh, uh, you say that we're not interested in elections. I, I mean, I don't understand that logic coming from any political party. However, Himachal Pradesh is not a triangular contest as in Gujarat. Aam Aadmi Party doesn't seem to be doing it well is. at all. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah, so that, that, uh, that uh, you know, gives a good chance to the Congress. Uh, which has put up a good fight this time, I would say. But whether it goes for that final the killer Congress has put up a good fight. jugular, that remains to be seen, you know, yeah, in the we final just, hours, we what just have happens. To wait and see. <laughs> Shubh Marotra, you're representing 
the aam aadmi party here now traditionally himachal pradesh we know is a two horse race right it has always been either between the bjp or the congress party uh, everyone had thought uh, given the optics around your entry into himachal pradesh uh, that the aam aadmi party would manage to make uh, not just noise but actually probably capture the voters imagination as well in your estimate has that happened because by the looks of it and reports that are coming out it doesn't seem to have happened that i'd first like to state that i'm not representing the amadi party over here i'm a political analyst but at the same time since you have asked me a question about the amadi party um, and uh, with respect to the impression they are generating let me tell you that these reports and these polls have turned out to be habitual offenders as far as amadi party is concerned again and again they have been proven wrong across various elections if you re- if i remember correctly in 2013 in delhi they stated <coughs> that they will land up with some around 3 or 4 seats but they ended up with a huge amount of 28 seats and the subsequent elections uh, history was created and the same was replicated in punjab just like what happened in delhi in 2015 and 2020 so i believe uh, somewhere these polls have always been falsified somewhere these uh, you know ground reports have always been falsified because often they do not capture the voice of the people who are the actual voters. voters of the aam aadmi party which is the deprived section of the society not the most vocal section of the society and at the same time uh, 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 also probably a bit scared to speak against the incumbents so somewhere the undercurrent remains uh, to be captured by these uh, reports and these polls okay so I, I, is it is it your view that the aam aadmi party will actually end up well uh, i'm just quickly going to get the bjp spokesperson in on that you know uh, there has been so much talk we know what what the optics uh, have been as far as the aam aadmi party is concerned the aam aadmi party said that all these allegations that the bjp is making against us in delhi uh, all the cases that the ed currently is pursuing us with is all related to the himachal pradesh elections which is why we are being targeted <coughs> that is the allegation Mo- mohit sood that has been coming in from the aam aadmi party uh, what what is your assessment of who your real opposition is is it the aam aadmi party or is it the congress party we are winning the election we don't have uh, any concrete opponent in himachal congress by far is lacking because they don't have a good leader aam aadmi party is nowhere to be seen and rest of the parties have no concrete status in the state so where do i come from i come from it, because we have uh doing a very good job by the double engine there has been lot of uh, central grants coming into the state we have got lot of big projects like the bug drug park the medical device park we got the vande bharat express to uh, start mm. from a small state like himachal the rail network is expanding the national highways are expanding and 5000 kilometers of road network has been created in the last 5 years which has been a record since himachal got got set, got got the statehood so all these factors put in together mm-hmm. and plus the social welfare measures that we have taken in the last 5 years definitely the bjp has made lot of inroads in the rural part of the state and lot of people and especially the women get connected to the ideology Then, of the party and mm-hmm. on that the youth and the women i think we are definitely coming back to power no i can see you know if i look at your 11.5 manifesto then i i can clearly see that there is a lot of emphasis on women for True. example you know of course you have said 33% reservation in government jobs uh, you are talking about allocation increase in the allocation uh, for girls of marriageable age it was earlier 31000 it's now 51000 you will also give school girls between classes 6 and 12 bicycles as well as an interest free loan to women entrepreneurs all that is very well but what happened to all those tall tall talks of the prime minister about revdi culture in this country if you had done so much good work where was the need to promise all this revdi we we are working towards women empowerment we are not alluring as the congress is doing by giving a false guarantee of 1500 rupees to women in the state they are distributing these false guarantee letters to women that every month they'll get 1500 rupees but i want to ask my counterpart in the congress where would those 1500 Piece into 30 okay. lakh women come from that comes to around 6,600 crores, which is the 
one third of the total planned budget of our state. I, they, the, my friends from the Congress can't answer where the budget for the OPS and the Women Guarantee Scheme will come from. They have just announced for the sake of announcing, as, as they have given these false guarantees in the SAM, where they lost badly in Uttar Pradesh, where Priyanka Gandhi campaigned and they lost the deposit in 387 constituencies. Similar is the case in Rajasthan. They announced the yeah. OPS scheme, but only 248 people have got the OPS benefit. Now the chief minister of Rajasthan goes to the prime minister and begs to him to grant him some assistance so that he can, he can implement what he has announced in the state. The Congress just announces no, no, Mr. Soon, three Bs. It can be argued that the money will come from the same place where the money will come from, you know, increasing the allocation of girls for eligible uh, ages or uh, giving bicycles to all schools, girls between the classes uh, of 6 have, and 12. The money will come from the sa same place. No, but no, let, no, no. Let me put let in a Ashpreet figure. respond let, let, to let no, no, Ash, let Ashpreet me, let me, let respond to your charge of these false promises. Ashpreet. Hey. So oh. see, number one. Uh, why there's a reason as to why I haven't even touched upon Aam Aadmi Party, Shreya. The reason is that Aam Aadmi Party is playing Mr. India's role in Amachi Pradesh's elections. So therefore, you know, playing invisible is something uh, that they're good at and that's why I won't really touch upon them in this debate. And number two, the Bharati Janta Party is saying, where would the money come from? One, I love their attitude, saying where would the money come from for welfare, for development? If money can come for Operation <laughs> Lotus, I'm very sure money can come from de for development as well. Uske liye niyat ki hoti hai. Niyat ki kami hai. That's why you haven't been able to do anything in Himachal Pradesh. And Shreya, you might remember in the first segment I asked him, tell me five things that you have done and please do not interrupt me. I did not interrupt you. So in, in, in the first segment, I asked him categorically, tell me five things that the Bharatiya Janata Party has done in Himachal Pradesh in five years. He couldn't tell me one thing. This goes on to suggest that the Bharatiya Janata Party hasn't just failed. You know, they are, they are in, in the coming elections, they'll, they'll, be, they'll be rendered, uh, you know, speechless, you know, with the results. And number two, uh, OPS. Uh, I think he has completely forgotten the fact that although we are not in the central government, we are in two state governments, uh, Rajasthan and Chhattisgarh, both, in both the states, we have already implemented OPS and the Bharatiya Janata Party stand with regards to OPS in Himachal mm -hmm. Pradesh is still unclear. Still unclear. And number three, you know, the real opposition, the Bharatiya Janata Party said there is no real opposition of the BJP there in Himachal Pradesh. Well, I'll give you an answer to that. Uh, the real opposition to the BJP is the people of Himachal Pradesh. You know, they are opposed to you. Not, not, uh, uh, and number two, there is massive in anti incumbency in the Bharatiya Janata Party. Since, you know, uh, they, they talk big about double engine, Sarkar, double engine, and all that, I think this is the kind of engine that keeps ramming into each other. You know, a train that has engines ramming into each other, which then leads to digressing from the rail track. That is what the Bharatiya Janata Party's double engine ki Sarkar is. And number four, Mr. Nadda. I saw one of his interviews and, you know, Mr. Nadda said that if the same party, uh, ho, if there's a similar party, same party in the, the state as, as the centre, so projects get cleared up very easily and very soon. I mean, this statement is absurd. Why would you say this, this was basically insinuating and implying that if there is going to be a different party other than the Bharti Janta Party, then the project might take, a lo might take longer to be cleared uh, uh, by the central government. I think this but is what the Bharatiya Janata Party has been the BJP's pitch all along. Sorry? But the, yes, that has I been the BJP's pitch all along. That has been the which BJP's pitch all which along. Is, Not just in Himachal is, Pradesh, but everywhere. Which, which is, BJP says double wrong. engine, Congress says trouble engine. That Neeraja, is who is in trouble this time? Let me ask you in the final analysis. Okay, in the final analysis, Neeraja ji, uh, there are at least two opinion polls that are out and we don't need to, of course, necessarily believe them, but they are giving, uh, you know, uh, the BJP, the, uh, the Himachal election this year. Mm, in, in the final analysis, what would have worked for the BJP if they do manage to break this jinx of the revolving door? Is it Prime Minister Modi? Because, I mean, Mr. Thakur has been fairly lackluster, many would say. Uh, yes, I would say I was in Himachal se several weeks ago and I found the opinion fairly evenly divided between Congress and the BJP. There's a committed voter of the BJP and there is the, those who want change. Uh, now, what is going for the BJP? Yes, I would say the Prime Minister certainly. Uh, his leadership, his campaigning, that, that is a factor in all the states that the BJP does use and the Prime Minister, as I said, has been campaigning in
relatively, even though Himachal is a very small state. Uh, as for the Congress, I think it had an opportunity this time. But whether I, as I said in the beginning, whether it could go, you know, it could get its act together in time, whether it was, uh, you know, go for the jugular, plan its uh, strategy well in advance. Uh, of late, uh, you know, they've had Mr. Kharge go there and uh, Priyanka Vadra go there and speak about women, etc., etc. Women and government servants are going to be very, very decisive this time. But whether what the Congress has done has been enough, that is the question. Otherwise, I think there was a sentiment which it could have encashed. And maybe it will encash. We don't know. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and watch. We'll leave it there for the moment, Neerja ji. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to thank all our other guests for joining us as well. Uh, this is